Hello guys, um, in this video I'm going to speak about 2D gel electrophoresis, uh, the two-dimensional gel electrophoresis. I'm going to speak about the principle of the technique and uh, how does it work. Um, so first, um, let's start with what is 2D gel electrophoresis. So 2D gel electrophoresis is a mechanism or a technique used for protein separation. Um, it depends mainly on SDS page. So here I want to tell you something. If you don't know what is SDS page, I highly recommend you to go back to my previous video, which is about SDS page. You can find the link in the description of this video. So go there, watch something about SDS page, and then come back and watch this video. This is will help you a lot to understand this video. So here it is. Let's first talk about a, a little bit about SDS page. So this is SDS page. Um, it's gel electrophoresis. It's used for protein separation. <coughs> uh, the gel used is polyacrylamide gel. And there it's composed of two layers of gel, the stacking gel and separating gel. Uh, the proteins are um, loaded in the wells in the stacking gel and then uh, the electrical field is um, is applied to the gel and then the proteins are separated in the separating gel according to their molecular weight. Um, this is from the previous video. Now if you remember I told you that the proteins in SDS page look exactly like this. So they are nothing but a peptide chain. There are no co non-covalent bonds um, because the SDS and the beta mercaptoethanol denaturate the secondary and tertiary structure of the protein. So the protein is um, becomes in its primary structure and it's negatively charged because of the SDS so the separation of the proteins in the SDS page depends only on the molecular weight of the protein. So neither the shape nor the charge of the protein plays a role in the SDS page. Now the question here is, what if two proteins have the same molecular weight? So let's imagine this. We have SDS page. Uh, we have three proteins. The first is protein 1, uh, 100 20 kilodalton, protein 2 is 65 kilodalton, and protein 3 is also 65 kilodalton. So if we have the gel, uh, we load the sample in the gel, we apply the electrical uh, fill, um, and then the proteins will be separated according to their molecular weight. So they will appear on the gel like this. Uh, protein 1 will appear somewhere around 120, uh, protein 2 will appear on 65 kilodalton and protein 3 will appear exactly on protein 2. So it will be impossible to um, separate protein 2 from protein 3 because they have the same molecular weight. And because of this, because we cannot depend on the molecular weight in this separation because they have the same molecular, molecular weight, we should find another feature of the protein to separate protein 2 from protein 3. And this feature here is the isoelectric point. So let me tell you a bit about isoelectric point. So here is the general structure of an amino acid. This is the amino group, this is the carboxy group. And uh, normally the amino acid uh, appears in three phases. In in nature. So in high P or in high pHs, oh let's start with low pHs. In low pHs, um, the amino acid is uh, protonated and then it gains a positive charge. In high pHs, it's deprotonated and then it's, uh, it gains a negative charge. In the middle, the protein is protonated on the amino group and pro deprotonated on the carboxy group so it's neutral because it gains plus one minus one charge so it's neutral. Um, the pH in which the, pro the, 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 the amino acid is protonated we call it PK, pKa1 or the carboxy pKa. Um, the other one is pKa2. Each amino acid in nature has different pKa1 and pKa2. So let's see. 
We have the nonpolar amino acids. Uh, this is the carboxy pKa. This is these are the pKa values. This is the amino pKa. We have the polar P, uh, polar amino acids. Some amino acids have a third pKa on the side chain because the side chain can also be protonated or deprotonated, like the acidic amino group and the basic amino group, for example. So. Each amino acid in, in nature has a different pKa1 and pKa2. Now, going back to this, <clears throat> the isoelectric point, we, we were speaking about isoelectric point. The isoelectric point is the very middle point between pKa1 and pKa2. And pKa2. So it's the very middle point in which the amino acid is totally neutral. This is what we call the isoelectric point or the PI. So the PI is the, is the pH in which the protein carries a net charge of zero. So we should know that the amino acid carries a net charge of zero in the isoelectric point. So uh, so yeah, what you have to know is when we go up, when we go to the to a pH up to the isoelectric point, the amino acids start to gain to gain a negative charge, and we when we go to a pH below the uh, isoelectric point, the amino acid starts to gain an, a positive charge gradually. So this is very is similar to a whole protein. Like an amino acid has an isoelectric point, and also the whole protein has a specific isoelectric point. Each protein has a specific isoelectric point. So this is what, what I was telling you. Uh, when the pH, when the protein is in a pH equals to its isoelectric point, so it carries a net charge of zero. When the pH is below the isoelectric point, the protein is positive. When the pH is larger than the isoelectric point, the uh, protein is negative. This is the feature we depend on in the uh, 2D gel electrophoresis. So let's, let's see how, how this works. In the 2D gel electrophoresis, there are two steps two steps of protein separation, or two steps of electrophoresis. The first one, in the first one, the protein separation according to the isoelectric point, which I, which I was talking about. So first we separate the protein according, the proteins according to their isoelectric point. How does that work? There are strips. Um, so this is a strip. Uh, you can buy it. <clears throat> the strip contains, um, pH gradient from low pH to high pH. It depends on the strip. It depends where where you buy it from. But yeah, normally it's from three to eleven. Sometimes it's from three to ten. It depends. So in the middle we have the pH seven, and here the low pH and the high pH. So we take this strip. We we put it in a container, like in a plastic container, like this. Um, and then uh, we have the protein sample. This is the protein sample. We take the protein sample, we pour it o over the strip. So we pour the protein sample over the strip, over in, in the container. And then um, we have the electric focusing. So we have a positive electrode and a negative electrode. So this is how it works. So imagine we have a strip, we have a pH gradient, we have the positive electrode uh, in, the, in the low pH side and the negative electrode in the high pH side. So let's imagine we have a protein, okay? We have a protein whose uh, isoelectric point is 8, for example. So this protein, the isoelectric point, its isoelectric point is 8. So when the protein is on, P, on pH 8, it's, it carries a net charge of zero. So the protein care, so the charge of the protein is totally the total charge of the or the net charge of the pro, protein is zero. So the protein will not move in the electrical field because it cannot move neither toward the negative nor toward the positive pole because it carries a net charge of zero. 
But let's imagine, so let's imagine that this red point is the protein. Let's imagine that the protein is here, for example, on pH 4 or something. As I told you previously, when the protein is in a pH below its isoelectric point, it carries a net charge, a positive net charge. So if the protein is here, so its net charge will be positive, and then it, the protein will move toward the negative pole, right? When the protein is moving from, from, from here toward the negative pole, its charge will be decreasing until it reaches the zero here on pH 8 because it's, it, it's the isoelectric point of the protein. So it stops. And if, if the protein is here, it will carry a net negative charge because as I told you, when the pH is higher than the isoelectric point, the protein will be negatively charged. So the protein, if, if it's here, it will be negatively charged and then it will move toward the positive charge. When it moves, it simil similarly, when it moves toward the positive charge, its negativity will be decreasing until it reaches zero and then the protein will stop here. Each protein in our mi mixture has a specific isoelectric point or it's possible that two proteins will have a very identical isoelectric point. So after the protein sample is poured here and uh, applied and uh, um, yeah uh, the, iso the, the, the electrical field is applied for for a certain time the proteins will be separated according to their isoelectric point. So we have a here the pro this protein for example has an isoelectric point of we can say 3.5, this is 5, this is, I don't know, this is 8, as I say, this is maybe 9. Yeah, so the proteins will be separated on this strip according to their isoelectric point. And this is what we call the first dimension, because in the 2D gel electrophoresis, we have two dimensions. So this is the first dimension. Now, in the second dimension, so in this in the first dimension, the movement of the proteins is horizontal. This is the first dimension. In the second dimension, we take this strip as it is with the proteins on it and we apply it on an SDS page. So this is an SD, this is a normal gel, polyacrylamide gel. So the second in the second, uh, the proteins separation will be according to the molecular weight. So we take this strip and we put it on the gel. We apply an so we uh, put an, uh, two electrodes, a negative electrode and a positive electrode. And in this time, the proteins will be separated on the gel according to their molecular weight, exactly as we saw in the SDS page. So here the separation is according to the molecular weight. It's, here is like normal SDS. So the first dimension is horizontal, the second dimension is vertical. So let's say, so here it is. I first told you what if we have two proteins that have the same uh, molecular weight. So let's, let's say we have protein 1 and protein 2, both of them are 90 kilodalton. Protein 1 has a low isoelectric point, protein 2 has high isoelectric point. And then when the proteins are separated, they will appear on the same uh, horizontal line, but they are uh, separated because they have different isoelectric points. If two proteins have the same isoelectric point, like these two proteins, for example, protein 3 and protein 4 both have isoelectric point of maybe 5.5, 5.6, something like this, um, they will be separated according, so they will be on the same vertical line, but they will be separated according to their molecular weight. So this is a very efficient uh, technique because um, it's so, so, so rare that you find two proteins that share the molecular weight and the isoelectric point. You may find some proteins who have the same molecular weight, other proteins may have the same isoelectric point, but it's very rare to find two proteins which share both the molecular weight and uh, the isoelectric point. This is it. Now the gel will look something like this. 
this is the gel these are all all the dots here are proteins and if you want to find your protein you should you should know the isoelectric point of the protein and its molecular weight um, these are not true that these are only some values so here I assumed that this protein has an isoelectric point of 6 and a molecular weight of 70 kilodaltons so the protein would appear somewhere like here this protein, for example, is a bit smaller and it has a higher isoelectric point. Um, this is everything I wanted to tell you about 2D gel electrophoresis. It's a very uh, nice technique. Um, if you have any questions, you can ask me in the comments. I will answer you. If you like my videos, please um, subscribe my channel, like the video, and uh, see you in the next video. Ciao!